I hope this video will help you to get some inspiration for your fireplace unit project. And more importantly, enjoy yourself during the process. It's a 20 years old stained maple fireplace mantle with brownish stone, which kind of looks okay, but not up to date. And we're gonna make it look like it's 2020. We're gonna go with a very popular color scheme, white and gray. Also, we're gonna build boxes for both sides, nice shaker doors, some floating shelves, and a nice MDF mantle with the mantle top. And let's get into the process of how I did that step by step. When you don't know where to start, pencil and a piece of paper usually helps a lot. So make a sketch, put all your thoughts together and ask your clients or ask yourself, what do you want in the end? How functional do you want it? And what do you want it to look like? Get some inspiration from Pinterest, Instagram, just Google some pictures and get all your thoughts together first. In my case, I had clients, Andrew and Tammy, they have a TV unit right above the mantle, which means that we're gonna have to have a hole going through the mantle top in order to hide those wires going from the TV down to the DVD or Blu-ray player, whatever they have down in the box. And also Tammy wanted to have as many shelves as possible, but without it looking weird or misaligned with the mantle top. So we decided to go with the three. Step number one, measure everything and put everything, all the pieces of information on the paper so you don't redo anything in the future. In my case, I had a few things to keep in mind. First, baseboards, the height of the baseboards, which means I wanted to have my cabinet boxes to be sitting above the baseboard so it looks nice. Nice. Also, I didn't want my shelves sticking out, so I needed to make sure that the shelves are slightly narrower than the depth of my niches. And the other thing is I had a bunch of electric outlets, which I don't really have to do anything right now, but I still need to keep that in mind in case if I want to move one of the electric boxes. So you want to think about that ahead. Here's what you can do. First, when it comes to making boxes and doors, you can definitely call around and ask your mill workshops how much they would charge to make a few boxes for you if you give them the, the dimensions. Or the other option would be to find a place that sells pre-made boxes that come from China or from some other place where you can basically get the pre-made boxes for cheap. Then the MDF doors and gables you can also get from a door place, basically a manufacturer of doors. They make it all the time and they can give you a pretty good deal unless you want to do it yourself. And here's how you do it. You go to the lumber yard, you get some double refined MDF which means it's a very high quality MDF, which is not going to give you that much of fibers raising when you spray it. And then based on your measurements, you cut everything, you prep everything, sand nicely all of the edges so everything is smooth before you spray it. And then we get to the painting stage, which you could also outsource and get your local spray shop to get done for you. But if you want to do it yourself, you can certainly do it. And here's my recommendation of, on what to use. In my case, I have a professional spray booth. And as of now, I upgraded to air fat respirator. So I'm always using two component polyurethanes, which give me the most durability, chemical resistance and all this good stuff. But in your case, let's be honest, this unit doesn't really need that much of chemical resistance because we don't have any food or chemicals. We don't clean it all the time, like kitchen cabinets. And you can certainly use a single component polyurethane, which is definitely better than any of your acrylic paints that you can get from a regular paint store. Here are the brands that I know and respect. Uh, these are Milesi, Circa, Renner, and Virolac, CIC. You can just Google it and see if you have a local distributor. Basically a company that resells this brand, has it in stock and can tint it for you and sell it along with some proper primer. Basically it's a single component waterborne polyurethane, which you can dilute with the water and it cures. It will give you a really nice and durable finish, really silky smooth, scratch resistant, and you're gonna love it a lot. I did everything in house. I sprayed everything because this is what we do on a regular basis. And if you don't want to paint yourself, here's a little trick how to save some money. You're looking for a paint shop in your area and then you ask them how much do they charge for painting raw MDF and then they tell you either it starts from anywhere around seven bucks per square foot which is pretty low and then it goes up but pretty much all of them will do a very nice job since they're using industrial grade coatings 
which means it's going to look smooth, it's going to feel nice without the hassle of spraying everything yourself in your basement. However, if you do enjoy it, well, good luck. I absolutely love that kind of stuff. Put up some plastic walls, some zip walls, or just wrap everything, you know, put some plastic on your walls. And here you go, you have a spray booth in your basement. And the good thing about using one component polyurethanes, they don't have any formaldehyde acids in it, so no harmful off-gassing and no isocyanates, which are harmful for you as well. So make sure you get some clean air coming in and the temperature is high enough and then you can basically spray in your basement or in your garage. There you go. And then when everything was ready, we're moving on to the next step, which is the on-site install. A few quick tips here, guys. I made my shelves a little longer just because I knew that I will need to cut them down a little bit. I will need to trim them just because not all of them will be the same length. Thus, I made them a little longer. Also, I did my kick plates a little longer because I want to cut them on site when I know the exact size after I installed my boxes. Before I got to the installation of my boxes, which is usually the very first thing that we would do, I sprayed this stone on the fireplace. And here's what I used. I used the Sherwin-Williams product called Duration. It was matte sheen, pretty much no sheen at all, but it's durable and I like that product. It's a really, really good stuff. I put up some zip walls on both sides. I hooked up my yellow fan to the duct from Global Industries to get some airflow and sprayed everything with my good old Graco 395. Nice and easy, done, moving on to the next stage. Connecting the boxes didn't really take me long. I just screwed them together before I installed them, level them all using my laser level, cut the holes for electric outlets and attach them to the wall. And here's the next big tip for you guys. When you do have more than one color combination of white and gray, like in this case, this stuff helps tremendously. I'm talking about gaps all around my millwork, all around my sprayed MDF pieces. We can't really cut them perfectly because our walls are not straight and sometimes we can't really get the piece in really nicely without scratching the wall or damaging you know drywall or damaging the actual piece of mdf so what we do have always is gaps how to go about it i put regular masking tape about a sixteenth of an inch off the edge all around the perimeter of my sprayed mdf pieces and then i caulk all of the gaps with regular acrylic caulking. The only thing is make sure you caulk as many times as needed so you don't have that shrinkage. If you need to do more than one coat, wait for it to dry and then put another bit of caulking to make sure that your caulking doesn't shrink and doesn't create that shadow line. And then once it's dry, you want to paint it with the wall color. And this is exactly what I did. Then I removed the tape and my lines looked absolutely awesome. No horrible black gap very nice transition even though my white piece didn't meet the wall right where the wall is it looks really nice because of that nice transition seamless transition that i achieved with a caulking and painting that caulking with the wall color moving on to the next step which is installing my floating shelf and let me tell you guys this is a tricky one here's my philosophy on spacing them out evenly first the bottom piece has to look nice nice i don't want it in line with the mantle just because it's going to blend in with the mantle and wouldn't allow my mantle top to stand out because it's usually the wider bigger more solid piece of mdf and we want it to look a little bulkier and that's why my bottom shelf would go slightly above the mantle i would say about an inch or two and then i'm thinking what to do with the top shelf I want it to be reachable, but at the same time, I want to place it as high as possible. And that's where my top shelf sets. And then I simply divide that space in between the two by two. And that's where my middle shelf will settle. And then I use my level to transfer all of the marks and level everything perfectly. And then I move on to the next stage. Here's how I attach my cleats. Basically, my floating shelf is made out of two layers of MDF with some void in between them. And that's why I need that void. First of all, I want to make my floating shelf a little thicker, a little richer. And the other thing is, this way we will just slide in the shelf onto those cleats and it's going to hold it really nicely. And here's how I attach my cleats. I either go with a combination of bread nails and caulking or PL or silicone, or 
cyanoacrylate adhesive or two part CA glue, 2P10 is another name of it. I believe it's called Instabond. It's a red label two component adhesive, really handy stuff. So we use a combination of the two caulking or silicone or PL with the CA glue or cyanoacrylate adhesive. And so here's what it gives me. The CA glue or the nails will give me the initial bond so my cleats stick to the surface, but caulking or PL or silicone will give me the strength for the future. When it dries, it's gonna hold it really, really nice. The only thing is make sure that your cleat is attached super, super tight to the wall. The tighter it is, the more strength you're gonna get out of your PL, caulking or silicone. And one of my final stages is touch-ups or painting the walls all around my shelves. As I mentioned before, I use regular masking tape. I don't really need a fancy frog tape, just because I go over with my caulking, which will seal the edge of the tape, thus I don't need that fancy frog tape, which I absolutely love, but it's just not for this case. In this case, even regular white or green 3M tape will work just fine. Again, just because my caulking will seal the edge. And then when I paint it, I remove the tape, I get a really nice and straight line. If you truly want to have your unit to look and feel like it's 2020, do not save money on hinges. I know that the regular hinges are pretty cheap. They're somewhere about a buck or two. Don't be cheap and spend another buck, really, another dollar, and get some nice soft closing hinges from Bloom and you're gonna love it. And here's a quick tip how you can save on this. Obviously, if you go to your big box retail store, they're gonna charge double or triple amount of money for those hinges. But if you have a good relationship with a mill workshop or, you know, a cabinet installer, just call them and just say, hey, can I use your account at a hardware distributor? They would most likely be happy to help you. So you use their account and get those hinges for really cheap. And same applies to hardware. Just a little secret, guys. Home Depot and Lowe's overcharge a lot for those handles and hinges. I mean, a lot. Go to your hardware place and get really, really nice handles and soft closing hinges for a lot less. If you guys forget some of these steps, keep going back to this video. Or if you have any questions during your project, feel free to reach out to me directly via Instagram. I'm always online. Or drop a comment down below this video. I'll be happy to answer as always. And also there is a whole playlist of videos on cabinet refinishing. So check out that as well. With that being said, see you next time. Cheers.